five Google extensions for Salesforce. Okay, I have these ranked one through five in order the way that I would recommend them to you. I wrote this a really long time ago. None of you cared because none of you knew who I was. You saw Planet Salesforce. You figured, man, this guy's crushing it. I better check this out. This is going to be the best of the best, which it is. So let's go over this. Number one, we have Salesforce Enhanced Formula Editor. What's really cool about it and the purpose of this entire video, what I'm going to do with you, if you want to read through all this stuff, all the descriptions, the cool little things, the highlights, feel free to jump over here. I'm not going to do that with you. I'm going to just show you specifically what I use this for. Okay, so we have our little example. I pop over here. We got our editor up and running. We got our little example. And the things I like about it is it's color coded is one. You have a find and replace option. You have a um, parenthesis pairing. Sorry, I can't think of the third one. Those are three of the big things that I use this for. Uh, and then number four I would add on is it has this formatter. I'll show you. So if I were to write something in, right? I have and, it turned it green. If I write or, it turns it green. I write if, it turns it green. If I type in a function like uh, BR, it turns it blue, is blank, right? turns it blue. And the reason I like that one is when I was learning this stuff, it really helped me understand like how this was all working together, which is a big one for me. Um, help me try to understand, okay, this is a, a valid function. This is what this function does. This is where it's mapped out. This is where I need to open up a parenthesis or where I need to close a parenthesis, right? So it kind of breaks it up. So it makes it a little easier to understand what's going on. I really like that, that part about it. Second part I like about it is if I spell it wrong like this, which happens when you're writing out complex ones, um, you can quickly identify that and be like, oh, whoa, this is actually not blue like it's supposed to be. I must have misspelled this somehow. So it's a quick identifier to let you know whether or not something is right or wrong in the way that you spelt it. Uh, the format piece of it, you can actually click this little bad boy and it will format it this way for you, right? So it actually will put it all into one single line. The reason it did that is because it thought, because I did not have a comma after it, that it was all one line of code there or uh, formula. So if I spread this back out and I actually go, you know, a comma after each one of these the way it's supposed to, and I space that back down and hit format again, it'll actually just move it all that way. So it's really nice because if you're writing something long, once again, it'll actually put it all into a really nice organized way so that you can um, not have to do that work. You don't have to space it out. You don't have to do all this tedious stuff when you're done. You just click this button and it makes it nice and organized for you so that you and anybody else accessing this uh, can have a really clean formula in here. So that's cool. You have your find and replace, which is sweet. So if I wanted to change this ID to, you know, task or whatever, I would hit replace all and it changes that all just like that. So once again, saving you a lot of time on the tedious end because you don't want to go through each one of those. If I had a lot of them, even just on these three, I don't really want to take the time to change three of them. Just want to change it all at the same time. It's a nice find and replace. Uh, you can change your font size. Uh, you have like whether or not you want to wrap your code, wrap text, which is nice. Um, so those are some cool things. The third one that I pointed out was this parenthesis pairing. So I have my little cursor here. I'm just hitting left. And as I hit left, it actually goes over it and highlights it in red. Um, that lets me know where those parentheses are pairing up. So if I have an extra one, Notice how it didn't it didn't pair it up. So I, that's an indicator right there of like, oh, well, what's this guy doing? Because I don't need it here, right? If I go over this first one, it's letting me know you're closing that off. So what's the second one doing? So that's really nice because you run into that quite a bit when you're writing these types of things of having too many parentheses. And then when you check your syntax, as if you know or you don't know, it gives you a really crappy thing. Sometimes not really any really clear of like what's going on. So that's really nice. Um, downsides to this, I would say is, yep, it's a paid one, which is really shocking because like almost every Google extension I ever run into is free. Uh, but this one's paid for, I think it's worth it. It used to be only five bucks, which was like a no brainer. Um, I went to renew it this year and I did renew it. It was actually 20 bucks, but it is for a full year. So, you know, 20 bucks in a full year, it's really not that much money. I'm sure you guys are paying for Netflix or Spotify or something else. It's like 10 bucks a month. So 20 bucks in a year is really not that big of a deal. And it saves a lot of time, I would say, and it's really worth it. So 
once again, feel free to run through this because it probably does more that um, I'm not using it for or that I could utilize a little bit better. So feel free to reach through that. Number two, I have Salesforce Inspector. Salesforce Inspector is pretty sweet. Um, for whatever reason, I got to minimize this thing so you can see it. It's this little tab guy right here. And when you click this tab guy, this thing pops out and you notice right away, two things happen. Let's me know that I'm on my opportunity, which is really nice. And also gives me that ID record for the opportunity, which is also really nice. There's a lot of times that I feel like in uh, automation and stuff, right? You have to reference these types of things and it's just a quick way to find it. Now it has all these different things you can look through. Feel free to do that on your own time because I ain't doing that for you. But we have these two right here, show all data and data export. Those are the two that I like to use. So let's pop those open and they're going to do two different things. We got our uh, show all data one and that one's going to specifically let me know like what's on my page layout um, or sorry, the better way to put that is what's on my object, even if it's not on my page layout. And then the data export is a quick way that you can run a SQL, which is really nice. So if I jump in here, this is our show all data. And like I said, it has everything that's on here. So even if I don't have this on my page layout, it's going to be here. It's just basically looking at all of your information like as if you would in setup, which is cool. You can get in here, you can manipulate stuff, you can change names, you can use it kind of as a quicker way to test stuff. So if I needed to, you know, test something on like automation wise, I can actually come in here and just, you know, double click into something and change it and then save it. Uh, so that's really nice. I really like that part about it. And then the whole thing of like, I don't need it on the page layout is also really cool. So that's a big one. Uh, the other one, like I said, we have our uh, Sockwell. So Sockwell is nice uh, to, you know, just pull a quick query on something. If you have to do that and you live that life, well, it made it even better because this actually has your query history and your saved queries. So I've had it in my uh, lifetime that I've had to like run a routine query and it was really nice to just have it saved versus, you know, saving these things on my computer, forgetting about them, forgetting where I stored them. They're just right here, just pops up like right after you're done. You just hit your little plus sign to save it. It will save it there and then you'll have it forever, which is really cool. So that's really nice. It saves you a lot of time. The other cool part is it has a prediction. So, you know, uh, Ideally, this is the way I like to do it is uh, write it out this way so I can read it better, right? Select from. Okay, cool. And as it pulls in the object we're looking at, um, it will actually say, you know, if I go back up to my select part and I want to find something else, well, here's all your stuff on your account object. It has it all right here. So once again, if I'm spelling something wrong or I'm looking at it wrong, it's going to let me know because I can find these things right away, which is cool. So I can just add those in. Boom. Gives me the next one. Boom. Gives me the next one. Boom. So that saves you a lot of time. Really cool to do it that way. I like this one a lot. Um, great. Let's jump over to number three. Number three, Salesforce. Uh, okay. So these are the icons. Um, this one right here. See these little guys? It changes the color. Right now, mine are purple. I can change those to something else if I want to. Reason that that's important is I have a little story for you. A little story here is that when I was a junior admin, I made a change, thought it was in a testing environment. It wasn't. It was in production. I don't think it was a big deal, but still made a change in production when I wasn't supposed to. As soon as I did that, had a coworker, a cool coworker of mine point this out to me. Uh, he said that he had done it before. Obviously, I think a lot of us have, he's like, Hey, why don't you download this? It actually changes the icons. And then just has like a visual reference, you know, what testing environment you're on just based on the color. So really like it for that reason. That's what allows you to do. If I wanted to change that, it's this little cloud guy right here. And if I click on it and go to my options, it will actually say, Hey, you got this thing marked as purple, which is what I showed you guys. So if I want that, like, I don't know, whatever this pink. I'd hit save, cool, exit out of it. And then if I just refresh my page here, it should move this to pink, which it did. So really nice, you can change them around, but main point of it is just to let you know, am I into testing, am I in production, where am I at, right? So that's really nice. Um, so I definitely get that one, it's free. I think the only paid one that I've gone over with you guys is the very first one. 
Iorad is number four. I'm not going to do this one as far as like an example. It's just going to take too much time. But the idea behind this one is that it does a screen recording. And as you do your screen recording, like let's say, you know, someone reaches out to you, a sales dude. And he's like, hey, man, how do you do? How do you enter in like a quote for a deal? Or how do you set this thing up, right? How do you guys enter in this information to a field? Well, if you got to show him that, you got two options old school way, which is go over to his desk, spend 50 gajillion hours telling him over and over and over again how to do it. Number two, make a screen recording, send it to him. Hopefully he understands how to do it and goes through it. Uh, or number three, you do this IORAD, which is a screen recording, but the enhanced version, because what it does is it turns it into an interactive um, uh, tutorial. <laughs> Gosh, can't think. Okay, so yeah, it turns it into an interactive tutorial for you. So what I mean by that is like when you're doing your screen recording, what it's doing the entire time is, you know, okay, I highlight this, it's gonna recognize you highlight it. If I scroll, it's gonna realize you scroll. If I click on this, it knows you clicked on it. So when you're done, you just screen record it like you normally would. You hit done, and then it turns it into this step-by-step -step tutorial that's interactive by option. They don't have to do it, but it's helpful because it will say like, go to this field, type this in, and we'll literally make them type something in to go to the next step. Go to the next step, click on this. They have to click on it to go to the third step. Right, so it reinforces it by making them do it, but you didn't have to spend all the time to make those steps. Um, it did it for you by just watching what you did, which is really cool. So if you're in the admin world, especially like just as an admin, uh, this one saved me a ton of time. Uh, number five, I couldn't show this one, unfortunately, just because I'm in a testing environment here, but the main reason I would use this one specifically is it has a really cool feature with change sets. Um, what it does with change sets is if you live in that world, uh, we all know that you got to step back into like the 80s, you know, 1999 when Salesforce first rolled out. They pretty much haven't changed that whole thing since 99. And what you got to do is you have to add stuff basically one by one, right? An example would be if I have three things, uh, three custom fields I got to add to a change set. And one starts with an A, one starts with a W, and one starts with a Z. I can't just go and find all those and add them all at the same time. I literally got to go find the A, add it. Find the W, add it. Find the Z, add it. Unless I'm willing to click show more every single time, clear to load all those fields, not going to happen, right? So it just takes a lot of time to do these change sets. So something I really like about this one is if you're adding, you know, 50 custom fields, it actually pops up a little search bar. That search bar will ask you what you're looking for as far as a custom field. You type it in, it finds it, you add it, and then you can add all 50 of them right then and there by just searching it and then add it all to your change set, which is really helpful as far as like saving your time. So that's the main one I use this for. Now I saved this one for last for a couple reasons. It actually does pretty much everything that I talked about. Um, so everything above, it's actually going to do as well. It changes your icons. It offers a formatter for your formulas. Um, you know, it does the change set stuff that I talked about. I think it does the Salesforce, Salesforce inspector side of it, like allowing you to pull a sock wheel really quick um, by letting you know like what your fields are doing. So it does everything. It's also free. Um, I didn't find this Google extension until later in my Salesforce career. So I have it as number five because yeah, it does offer all of that. The ones I showed you already though, those are like preferred. I feel like they're a little bit stronger of a tool than this thing all combined. This is kind of just more of like jack of all trades and we offer it all, all in one thing. And it's really cool that way because I don't have to have 50 different you know, Google extensions up here. Um, but I don't feel like they're all the best. Those ones I showed you were better than these in my opinion. So when I found it, I was like, oh, cool. I can take away these other Google extensions I've been using. As I got to use it, I was like, nah, because these other ones are actually a little bit better. So I would rather use those four different ones than just this one. So I don't really specifically use it because they kind of compete like on my browser here uh, as far as like me trying to do something. So if I jump into like a formula field and I have this extension on there with that other formatter, it doesn't know I've run into problems where it like doesn't know which one to use. So 
for all that kind of stuff, I've just taken it off. But if you want to go this route and you just kind of want to get the swing of things, maybe start using this one first and it'll be better for you. Um, but yeah, that one's really nice for that reason because it is free. And if you're new to all this, you might want to try it that way.